Um, so now we're going to talk about cloud storage, which is one component on the, of the cloud platform. So wh why cloud storage? What is cloud storage? So the, the, the general challenge we, uh, we detected in the market on cloud storage and on storage in general is that people have more and more difficulty you know, to, to patch the system, to do replication, to do a disaster recovery, to locate storage. And uh, th that's why we thought that because at Google we have a huge infrastructure, we have a lot of hard drive and a lot of capacity of storage, we could help people, so startups, uh, companies, large companies as well, by giving them an easy solution to store any type of object up to uh, four terabytes. And uh, this object is automatically uh, replicated in our cloud. So, and because we own our um, bandwidth, you know, all the fibers between our data centers, we can do live replication. So the idea is that you can upload from anywhere and uh, have the files available uh, from any other data center. So you can have a global storage system for uh, your application and for your backend if uh, you are in a mobile application development scenario. So main use cases we see, content serving. So people now are using cloud storage directly to offload the bandwidth of their website because you can link heavy files directly to cloud storage because there is an HTTP URL that uh, is associated with each of the files and if you make the file public, the idea is that people can download directly the file. And because we have what we call an edge cache, uh, at Google, so we have you know, thousands of network infrastructure in the world. The idea is that the first one is going to pull the files from the data center that will be copied in our edge cache, and the next one will only go to the edge cache. So a practical example, imagine uh, you store in uh, Central Europe uh, your files. Someone in Italy goes on your website or uses your mobile application, requests the file, so it can be an update of the application. The file will be stored clearly in one of the main cities in Italy, so the next one won't have to go back to Central Europe or US. It will be much faster in terms of latency and in terms of bandwidth as well. Archive backups, so that's quite obvious. Uh, data sharing, because the idea is that you can share uh, an object to uh, any Google account okay, directly in, a, of course, a very uh, secure way. So the idea is that we have uh, companies, you know, in the cinema who wants to, uh, to have the original movie. They will store it and exchange it from uh, New York or Hollywood to, uh, to uh, Europe directly using cloud storage because this is very secure and very fast. Okay. Storage for application, of course, and, uh, and for computation, uh, computation because for all the uh, HPC scenario, like high-performance computing, people are usually um, need to crunch a large amount of binary data and they need to have that central storage and to request it to do the computation on each of the machines and then give back the result. So that's another use case. So as I said, the, the idea is not like one hard drive uh, in one, on one server at, in one data center with cloud storage. This is really a global solution. This is something we are using at Google for a lot of products and I, on the last slide we'll have some ideas of which product are using it. So, what we really think is key there is the performance of the network, so the accessibility to the file the, and the replication, so the high availability of the file. So that's why we have, you know, SLAs 99.95 on this kind of solutions. The network, again, so between data centers, between the data centers and the end users, this is almost, this is usually our network up to the very last mile, which is a telco, like a, they will be from the user to our, our point of presence, maybe let's say fast web. And as soon as they go into our fast web peering agreement, because we have peering agreements with all the telcos, then you are on Google network. And then it goes really, really fast. As I said, so it's up to five terabytes per object. It's, um, it's I, I will show you, so there you have like, a, we call that bucket. You see it like a folder. And then within buckets, you can create these kind of folders and upload, modify, uh, archive. You can do also versioning. There's a lot of features. OK, I don't want to repeat myself too much, but it's really about speed, reliability, and uh, scalability in terms of storage. We have customers right now who are storing more than 10 petabytes okay, of data. Next. OK. How does it work? How can you use it? So as always, this is an API, so RESTful API. 
And we, as always, have three ways so you can connect. So you have the API directly, if you need to do deep integration with your application. We have a common tool called GSUtil, and I will show it after. And we have also the UI, so in the browser, and I will show it as well, so you can browse your files while you are testing. So the API, so as I said, RESTful, buckets and objects. So the idea is that that's really a snippet of what you can do. You just put on HTTP. So we do, as always, the client API to help you save some time if you want to use the Java client, uh, I don't know, .NET client, or whatever language to save some time and, and not work at the um, HTTP level. And, um, and of course, you are, by REST, we mean HTTP headers, so really a pure HTTP. So you can connect, what it means that you can connect from nearly everywhere, okay? And any kind of technology. It's very easy to, do a, to build a connector. And we have an ecosystem uh, of uh, partners who are providing appliances to this storage. Some features, so you can do streaming, resumable transfer. So if you have a large file upload or download and the, the, the uh, connection point is broken, then uh, you can resume at the precise byte where you were stopped. Optimize browser uh, upload and download, and also you can do a multi-part upload. I will talk about that later if you have a very large file. So resumable upload, so here you can see uh, code snippets as well showing how you do that. You know, you will say which range you want to upload or download directly, so in, within a file, because we talk about large files, so of course you don't want to re-download or re-upload a full file, you can update, uh, or you can download just a specific part of the file. The gateway is here as well. About security, uh, how does it work? So there is a default hackers, so access control list, and then you can specify hackers per object. So you can imagine um, specifying like a permission to a technical account, so various set of permission, and uh, you can map these permissions to the relevant object. And for browser access, we use O2 as always. So the, the GS util, so that's a preview, but I, I'll open my terminal from the Mac to show you where, how it works. An example from Python, okay, so three lines, you just uh, take the library and, uh, and then you, you pass the command. And the URL is GS, Google Storage, you know, semicolon slash slash. And the rest way, we already had an example before. So the ecosystem, uh, these are the first ones, but they are new new ones since then, uh, who are building uh, solutions. So I know that Panzera, Strata, for example, what they do is that uh, they sell appliances to large companies. And this appliance, the companies put them in their data center, and they can then um, do uh, like uh, network shares directly. So from your Windows environment, you can connect to a network file, net network drive, and you don't even know it's, uh, it's cut storage behind the scene. So they expose that type of protocol and they do caching, so you have fast performance. So some use cases, NAS, very uh, useful to augment. So you can say I have a, a limited space and I want to be able to have more space, but I, I don't know how much I need cloud storage because it's paper use, you know, as always. It's very nice to have a, a burstable zone, you know, so you can extend. That's really enterprise use case, I admit. So uh, <laughs> that's uh, not a pretty slide, but these are the main features, okay, uh, we see. So bucket model, the really, again, we insist on the um, reliability. So read after write, what we really mean is that you can really think of, I don't know, uploading a one terabyte file from uh, New York and download it three seconds after from here, Roma, okay? And that will be the same file. You don't have to wait for a replication overnight. This is really a global live real time. That's uh, really the idea. The API, we, have, uh, we are interoperable with Amazon S3. I guess we imagine uh, this, is the, this is our main competitor today. Um, I talked about the access control and some new features about notification versioning, uh, JSON API, etc., etc. Composite object as well. Composite object is nice because this is, imagine you have a very large file. You can split it in small files and upload all of them in parallel. So you can optimize your bandwidth. These are some examples uh, of uh, the GCUtil common, common line. Uh, so this is pretty simple. You just GCUtil CP. GCUtil is a simple um, 
binary you can download in a zip uh, or tar format and run it from any kind of terminal. So this is using shell. And um, it has basic functions, but it has also a more advanced function. So here uh, where you can get uh, GSUT, GSUT, sorry. Uh, there is some links to the documentation to the SDK. Um, and the, the Python pack package is also uh, available online. Here are the main functions. We won't go one by one, but just to give you an idea of what kind of functions you can do from, uh, from GSUtil. Like uh, the perf diag, nice also when you want to see if the performance is good between you and um, your network and cloud storage. The object composition that I've been uh, mentioning earlier. So as you can see, you, um, first you split your big file. So that's really uh, convenient when you want to upload, uh, I don't know, uh, hundreds of megabytes or terabytes or more. You can split your file. You can do a multi-part upload. So it, it will run in parallel. So you can define a number of threads you want to run in parallel. And, uh, and then it will compose. And then at the end, you delete the, uh, the uh, compose. So it will regroup, of course, into a big files, your, your parts files. And at the end, you, you delete your part files. So that's one way to upload very, very large amount of data. One example, five petabytes in five weeks. So that's a real use case from the UK. We can't yet disclose the uh, name of the customer, but uh, uh, it has millions of users. It's doing uh, like backups for end users. And um, they had to migrate from Amazon S3 into uh, Google Cloud Storage. And uh, what we explain here is that, uh, so they started uh, earlier this year, like in January, February. And that's the type of performance we get. Because we have, as we said, a strong network, so we have pretty good connections with uh, other big cloud players. So 10 gigabit per second, even more, uh, when we reach the peaks. Um, and how does it work? How do we implement such uh, large uploads? So that's how it works. So again, you know, when I said uh, earlier in my presentation, we see App Engine as an orchestrator. So App Engine is very convenient for that kind of usage. So it will directly uh, start uh, create the task queues that will download from Amazon S3 and then upload from cloud storage. Compute Engine here is uh, the, the right product to implement the migration workers. That are, that are, and then you can imagine you can um, spin one to 10 to 100 machines as, as, as much as you want. It, you will be uh, limited, of course, by the network, not by the number of machines. And then it will upload directly into the migration bucket. And the idea is that you need to check for that type of, of, um, of big uploads, you need to check uh, the consistency of the files. So you can do directly that with CRC, okay, from, the, uh, fr 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 from another worker. That's the type of architecture to uh, upload very large amount of files. So as I said, we are using it internally, like always, all Google products are always um, product we choose to build because we couldn't find the right technology on the market. It's true for Gmail, it's true for all Google products. So all these Google products are using Google uh, Cloud Storage today. Maybe even more because this slide is not really, really uh, recent. And uh, of course, BigQuery and Prediction, which are two other uh, cloud platform uh, products. You are, what you do is you always upload on Cloud Storage. And from BigQuery, you have one command, so you can load into BigQuery before you run your SQL request. Prediction is uh, using the Cloud Storage the same way. OK, so let me uh, show you the GS util stuff. So I need to sit down, sorry. And, um, and the UI. So first with the UI. Uh, so that's it. So here I am on um, cloudgrail.com slash console. This is really where you, you have access to all your services. I am on the cloud storage product for this. Sorry? Ah, you don't see the URL, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why, it, uh, because the projector is going too high. <laughs> okay, it's not really important. The idea, I, I can show it, but. Okay. So cloud.girl.com slash console. This is where uh, you, ha you see your console. From where do you see them? Okay, from there, so it's okay. So in cloud storage, so this is the UI, the, 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 um, the web UI for cloud storage. You see all the buckets on the left. So here we are on a global Google, uh, internal Google um, demo platform project. So there are all, it's not only me. I have my bucket right there, Bastien-test, where I have some files. 
And the idea is you can dra drag and drop directly a file from your explorer. Sorry, it's not a good one, a good idea. I need to go with a, uh, because Chrome is overriding that. Let's go with uh, this type of, of file. I know I don't. So okay, let's do that that, that way. I remember some norm normally I have a, I have drag and drop, but basically let's go that way. So it will upload okay the file directly, and you will see it here, okay. And you can do exactly the same type of operation from GSUtil. Don't know if the resolution is good enough for you. Can you see? So that's the uh, list of uh, comments we have on, on, on GSUtil. Uh, and basically, you just do a CP. So I'm going to first delete the file, so you can see uh, the file coming back. So uh, you can delete the object directly from here. I'm doing here with a small object, but um, I've been uploading, as you can see. Sorry. Oh. No. It's coming back. Ah, yeah, okay. I've been told that you don't see very well. So that's the list of the buckets, okay, on the left. So we'll see, it, uh, see them as uh, root folders. And I am currently on one bucket, which is mine, Bastion-Test, where I have some, um, some files that I have uploaded. And I wanted to highlight that uh, you can, that's not even a very large file. As I said, we can go up to five terabytes. So you can drag and drop normally from the browser, and you can also uh, upload. So that's what I wanted to show from uh, from uh, GSUT directly. That's this is how you're gonna you're gonna use it uh, afterwards. Yes. So I am right now in my uh, local folder, and uh, I just do um, I just do CP test the, the PDF file I was uploading directly to the bucket. You don't see it. Right there. Okay. Thanks to uh, the Apple OS. <laughs> so it's uploading the PDF. And now, so I can, f I will force the refresh. And you see my PDF is back there, uploaded right now. It's, uh, it's even local time. Okay. So very easy. So of course, uh, there are many, many other commands. You can use the, mul the multi thread uh, version, etc. Um, let's let's try the perf stuff. Perf guy. No, not the right one. How is it? It's GSUtil. Ah, yeah. Now there is a, a, a whole command line for that. So I won't go into all the comments, but the idea is that it's really simple. You have your comments right there. You can upload your file, download your file, and uh, do a multi-part upload as well. Okay. And this is uh, the UI, so you can do basic operation, you know, like working on the object permissions, which group has, has access to what. And that's, of course, live. That's, of course, uh, sorry, up. Th this, is a, um, this is updated live on the, uh, on the icons of the object. OK. I've been quite, quite fast on the uh, cloud storage. So now what we're going to do is, uh, go with uh, the infrastructure in general and compute engine, OK? But what I would like, so unless someone tells me you have already seen the, um, the video, but it's uh, five minutes long, it's Urs Olzi, so our director. Uh, has anyone already seen that video, Cloud Platform Track Kickoff? It's really, really key, but because this guy is the first engineer at Google. He's now uh, head of uh, the, the whole infrastructure, so within which we have Cloud Platform. He's really inspiring, so I prefer to let him talk for five minutes rather than me. So it will explain you what, is, uh, what we have been doing for 14 years with our data centers, our network. I think it's really important for you to understand that before I go on Compute Engine, you know, which is the virtualization machine technology, um, where I will do some demo as well. Okay? So hope the network is with us. And uh, I would like also to have a mic, please, the red one session at Google I.O. I am Urs Hölzli. I run technical infrastructure at Google. And let me start by talking a little bit about the history of our infrastructure. Uh, we started building our internal infrastructure 
a long time ago, over a decade ago. And we had to start building it because there wasn't really any infrastructure that scaled to the demands of our workload to search, to Gmail, to apps, to everything. And last year, I invited Stephen Levy to come by and have a look at our infrastructure. And he, wrote, he called it the mother of all clouds, which is kind of true because we've been working on it for 14 years. So for 14 years, we've been building the largest, fastest, and most cost-effective infrastructure in the world. Uh, for over a decade, we've been building our servers, we've been building our data centers, we've been building our networks. You use this infrastructure every day, probably, because you use Google products, and so you know how fast and reliable it is. And building such an infrastructure is really a huge task, and sometimes it's a huge headache. But for me and my team, it's a huge challenge, and that's what makes us get up in the morning, come to work, to go and make that infrastructure even better. And with the Google Cloud infrastructure, you can now use that same infrastructure for your own applications. But before we get into that details, let me just show you a few pictures of how this actually looks. Here's what looks uh, like a room of servers, but it's actually from our networking room. Our networking rooms are larger than some other people's server rooms. Here's another look at a networking room where we connect our data centers together. Here's a row of servers, each server built by us and optimized for performance and cost. So maybe they're not pretty, but they're fast and very effective. Here's a row between, here's the inside of a server row. So on both sides, you see the back of the servers, they push their hot air into this plenum where it gets uh, cooled again. Here's a server room in Finland where we converted a paper mill into a data center. And here's a mechanical room in one of our data centers where all the cooling water comes together. Blue pipes deliver the cool water to the floor. Red uh, is the warm water coming back. And here's some cooling towers in the data center. We use cooling towers uh, where we evaporate uh, water in a, uh, to cool our data centers in an environmentally friendly way. In fact, we spent a lot of effort to make our data centers in our cloud as environmentally uh, um, um, you know, compatible as possible. So we've been leaders in data center efficiency, for example. Uh, our data centers use only half as much of energy as normal, average data centers. And that's good not just for the environment, it's also good for you, because less overhead means less cost and we pass these savings on to you in lower prices. We're also the first internet company that's gotten ISO 14000 environmental certification for our standards at the data centers. And we're proud to have been the cool IT leader uh, at, in the Greenpeace leaderboard for two years in a row now. So when you run your applications in the Google Cloud, you know you're not just getting great performance, but you also get great environmental uh, performance. And we're continuing to build this infrastructure. Just in the last 12 months, we announced data center expansions in the US, in Europe, in Asia, and in South America uh, for over $2.9 billion. So clearly, we see a lot of growth uh, in demand for our services, but we also wanted to make sure there's enough room for the growth of your services. We also run one of the world's largest networks. We're the only company that's not an ISP to own and operate submarine cables, for example. So here you see some pictures of the Unity cable uh, where we uh, organized a consortium to build a new cable between the US and Japan that today serves uh, several terabits of capacity between those two places, just in, just in time for, for Gangnam style, I, I guess. Um, so our network spans the globe. And it includes one of the largest, if not the largest, CDN. We peer with virtually every major ISP worldwide. So we can hand off your bits to the end user ISP in one step and therefore have the best performance and speed. So, you're knowing, so you know that you're not just getting the best performance inside the data center, you're also going to get the best performance between data centers and to your users. And our network is not just big, 
It's also one of the most advanced networks you'll find. Uh, well, today, many are talking about introducing software-defined net networking. We have been running a software-defined backbone for over two years. Our OpenFlow Power backbone, which you see here, connects our data centers and provides much better performance and cost than our previous backbone. And so when you run your application on a Google Cloud, you'll benefit from that backbone as well. And of course, we work not just on physical infrastructure, but also on software infrastructure. And I'm especially proud that we can really claim the best track record of any company in building infrastructure software. Here's just a few examples from the last uh, decade or so. In, two, in 2002, we built GFS, the Google file system. And GFS was really the first file system to scale to data center uh, size. We had to build it because no existing file system could really handle our workload. Remember, to build web search, you have to first build an index. And to build an index, you have to store your own copy of the web in a file system. So that's why you built uh, GFS, which later, a few years later, inspired uh, Hadoop uh, file system, HGFS. But we're not actually using GFS anymore. We moved on to Colossus, which is, which is its uh, much more capable successor. And that's what's actually powering a cloud storage today and also pretty much any other storage um, at Google. Now, why did we retire what arguably was one of the world's most successful and most capable file systems? It's because we're building for the future, and we wanted a file system that was more capable, a file system that can handle workloads and storage pools at least 100 times bigger than GFS, a file system that has higher availability with multi-master uh, and fully distributed uh, directory, a file system that understands Flash, you know, and so on. And we also learned a lot of things in the 13 years since we started using GFS. And all of these things have flown, uh, flowed into, into Colossus, and therefore we have retired uh, GFS. For another example, 2004, we created MapReduce, which of course inspired Hadoop and the whole big data industry. Uh, similarly here, we have a lot of MapReduce still running inside the company, but we're not actually using MapReduce anymore. We use Flume, which makes it much easier to construct sort of large pipelines of MapReduces. 2006, we created Bigtable, which is probably the world's most scalable NoSQL uh, infrastructure, and very likely the most battle-tested NoSQL infrastructure there is. Almost everything at Google uses Bigtable. So Gmail, web indexing, uh, G+, if, you, if they use a, a NoSQL uh, system. So pretty much everything runs on Bigtable today. But of course, we're also working, we're already working on making it obsolete. And uh, last year we talked about Spanner, which gives you uh, a similar, uh, um, a similarly scalable and similar performance system, but with uh, transactional consistency. So I hope you're catching my point, right? Not just one. Let's stop there. If you want to see the whole video, you just search. I will show you after, because I want to work on this slide as well. So it's really interesting to see uh, all these products. May maybe you haven't heard about Fregel from Java, because these are usually our internal code name for project. But what you need to understand is that we built uh, App Engine data store. It was big table, by the way. And uh, so the initial data store of App Engine, when App Engine was released in 2008, its cloud data store, the cloud data store of today, originated from here, big table. What you see here, Colossus, so from last year, it's Google Cloud Storage. So it was a great introduction to Google Cloud Storage. I should have put it before my, <laughs> my Cloud Storage presentation. So this is the internal name of Google Cloud Storage. Okay. And Dremel is the internal name of Google BigQuery. So we have all these internal technology we had to build because uh, we couldn't find any technology in the market to serve our needs. And when we see that other people are interested by this kind of technology, we just uh, choose a name, you know, an external name for it. 
and the pricing, and the, we, we build a website, and we put the product online. That's really the idea uh, of what we're doing on Cloud Platform, is giving you um, the consequence of our research, the, of product that we use every day, so you can use it for your own needs. Okay, so having your application powered by our cloud, that's really the, the general idea. And if you search for this kind of videos, just to show you where you can find it, so this is on, you search for Google I.O. sessions, and you will, we will go there, and uh, on Google Cloud Platform, you will see all the sessions, okay? And you have very uh, interesting things. For cloud storage, you have a, it's a 30 minute video usually, importing a larger data set. So uh, my presentation was inspired from that, of course. And then uh, the backend we discussed this morning, from nothing to never nine minutes, cloud backends for your Android app was also there. So uh, I really encourage you to uh, have a look because these are our product manager architects who are <coughs> explaining how uh, we think you could use our technology. Okay. So now let's switch to um, Compute Engine. Now you had a great introduction from Urs and you better understand what kind of work we've been doing. So I will start with a few slides and then uh, with a demo. Um, and then we go for the, for the coffee break. Okay. Ah, sure, yeah, sorry. And by the way, if you have questions on cloud storage before I jump on Compute Engine. I have just a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, is your uh, strong read after write consistency model covered by your SLA? Yeah, okay. it's, uh, it's part of the SLA. Okay, uh, the second one will be, um, does it still cover the listing feature? The listing on Compute Engine? On the mm, no, the, I mean the consistency model, does it cover the listing of the object that you store in the cloud storage? Ah, yeah, yeah, because it's a metadata. So the idea is that uh, a bucket is uh, like uh, an object with uh, children because this is a tree model. So, so every, you can I list. Yeah. So every time I require a list of the objects that I stored, I get a full read of the right consistent list yeah. of the objects. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wonderful. Thank That's you. one of the features. If you have other questions, uh, one over there. You give, yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to know um, which are the differences uh, between uh, the, the Google Drive APIs and the Google Storage, Google Cloud Storage. Yeah. And when do you recommend to use one with respect to the other? Yeah, it's a good question I have from many customers. So uh, you know, it's like the Chrome versus Android battle. No, it, frankly, Drive is user storage. So you have your little client you can use to, uh, you know, to synchronize your folder on your Mac or PC. You have viewers, you know, you have 25 viewers. You can view PDF, AutoCAD files, any Office files, etc. And on Drive, we put that now the focus on fidelity with uh, Microsoft Office. That's our focus. So it's really user storage, whereas here, cloud storage, even if you see the UI where you can list, etc., this UI will be only for administrator. Okay, you won't give that to users because uh, this is really optimized for uh, heavy usage, very very large files. Mm -hmm. So of course you could upload uh, three doc files uh, in cloud storage. When you click, it will redownload the files. Mm -hmm. So use Drive instead. Uh, then it's a matter also of load, if, oh, no, sorry, not load, but uh, overall size. So cloud storage um, drive is up to uh, 30 gigabytes now. You know, we have a common, uh, and uh, we, there was an announcement with Gmail, we now pull the storage. And here with cloud storage, you can go to petabytes, uh, virtually uh, no limits, okay. Okay, uh, are there any differences uh, with respect to permissions uh, we can assign to files uh, in Google Drive and in uh, cloud platform uh, storage? Yeah. So in Drive, you set the permission, you know, owner, viewer, editor, to all the users in your domain or any Google account. Or you can even put it uh, fully visible on the web. Or anyone with the link, you know, there are various models. And again, Cloud Storage and Drive are totally different products. This is not the same team. Uh, cloud Storage is really for application storage. So you can okay. define hackers and uh, permissions to a Google account, but it will be always a technical account. It wouldn't be... Uh, uh, user account uh, for uh, end user usually. It can be like a group, a technical group, uh, etc. Because the cloud storage will you you, won't, you will never expose it to the user. You will always use it 
uh, as a backend of your application, and your application will talk to cloud storage and talk to the user, but not the user to cloud storage. That's not a real use case that we see. Um, the closest the user can be to cloud storage in is when uh, you have the Panzura stuff with an appliance, where it's browsing cloud storage from, but it's connecting to the appliance, actually. And just before, on Drive, I said 30 gigabytes, you can go, uh, you can buy more storage. It's not limited, it's what you have by default. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, you want to move on the uh, computer engine? Sorry, uh, just a small addition. I think that you can use Drive also when you have to manage some personal kind of storage. So for example, on Android, it's very good to use Drive to store the preferences of your applications or stuff like that. Instead, I think that cloud storage is better when you have to store something that is globally available or not related to just one user, more or less. Yeah.